for today's video we're going to take a look at a Moldivo Mentor pinwheel calculator, made somewhere in the 1950s or 60s. In part 1 we looked at the restoration of the Moldivo, I'll put a link to that video in the description, but for now let's have a look at the machine now it's completed. Now that the restoration is complete I think it's time for a demonstration. To add a number into the machine, you put it into the input register using these little levers. So if I put in 1098, to add that, I just crank this handle forwards like that, and you'll see 1098 is in the output register. Next, if I want to add to that 1147, I'll put the 1147 into the input register and crank the handle forwards again and that's also added in. If I now want to add to that 1812, I'll put the 1812 in here like that and crank the handle forwards again. And then finally, if I want to add 143, I'll get rid of the first digit and then we go 1, 4, 3 like that, crank the handle forwards and that adds that in and the answer is 4200. To clear the input register, I just pull this white lever here towards me and it clears back to zero. To clear the output register, I pull this brown lever down and that clears the output register. If I want to do subtraction, first I have to enter a number into the output register to subtract from. So if we put in 10,000, I'll put that into the input register, crank the handle forwards once and that enters it into the output register. I'll now clear the input register and if I want to subtract from that 4200, I'll put the 4200 into the input register and wind the handle backwards and that subtracts it. If I now want to take from that 4321, I'll put in the 4321 into the input register and again wind the handle backwards and that subtracts that. Finally, if I want to take 1437 from that, so we'll have uh, 1437 and again wind the handle backwards and that leaves us with 42. I'll now clear both the registers again, so clear the input register, clear the output register, and now it's ready for the next calculation. So next, if I want to do some multiplication, if I put 42 into the input register, like that, if I want to multiply by that by 5, I simply crank the handle forwards 5 times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you can now see the 42 in the input register has been multiplied by 5, that's the counter to show how many times I've turned the handle, and that gives the result 210. Looking at the counter and the output register, if I only want to clear the counter, I move this little knob to the left and pull this lever, and it'll only clear the counter. If I only wanted to clear the output register, I'd move that knob to the right and pull the lever, and that would only clear the output register. If I'm doing some calculations where I repeatedly only want to clear one or the other, so if I only want to clear the counter, I can move that to the left and then I can latch it in that left position using that little knob there, and now it'll only clear the left hand counter. When you move this little knob to the side, it latches in place. If you find you've moved it in error, you can simply press this little button here and that'll release that knob back to the center. Anyway, we'll clear both registers with this lever now. If I want to multiply my 42 by a slightly larger number, so let's say 1984, I don't have to crank the handle 1984 times. In the units column, I'll crank it the four times, so one, two, three, four, and then I'll shift the carriage across one using this button here, and now I'll be working in the tens column, so I'll turn the handle eight times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that, and then I'll move the carriage across one more, and I'll now crank it nine times, like that, and finally move the carriage across once more, and in this column I'll just turn the handle once, and you'll now see my 42 has been multiplied by 1984, giving the answer 83,328. 
If I want to use something with decimal places in it, I've got these little markers I can use to indicate where the decimal points will be. So, if I want to multiply 3.142, I shall add the 3.142 into the input register, and I'll put the decimal place there after the 3. And if I want to multiply that by 13.3673, the 13.3673 will appear in the counter here, so that means you're going to have four decimal places there. And to work out where the decimal place will be in the answer, you add the number of decimal places in the counter and in the input register, so that's 4 plus 3, which will give us seven decimal places in the answer. So now in the first column, I'll multiply by the 3, so 3 turns, 1, 2, 3, then I'll shift the carriage across 1 and multiply by 7, one, two, and then shift the carriage across again and multiply by 6, and then across again and by 3, and then again by another 3, and finally one more and do the 1. So you'll now see my 3.142 has been multiplied by 13.3673, giving the answer 42.0000566, which is close enough to 42. For division, generally you'll move the carriage all the way to the right to allow for decimal places. You can either use the right shift lever several times, or there's a little button down here which releases the ratchet on the carriage so you can move it all the way. So we'll move it all the way to the right. So if I want to divide 2029 by 800, I'll put the 2029 into the input register. There's a blue dot here, you don't want to work any further to the left than that because it won't appear in the output register. So 2029 into there and crank the handle once to add that into the input register. Before I do anything else now, I want to clear the 1 out of the counter because the actual answer will appear there. So I'll move this button to the left, pull the lever, and that clears just the counter. So, now I'll also reset the input register. If I want to divide that by 800, we'll put the 800 in here, so that's 8 and 2 noughts. So next, we need to work out where the decimal places are going to be. In the input register we've got the 800, so that means the decimal point marker will be there. And in the output register we've got the 2029, so the decimal place will be there. So we've got 12 decimal places in the output register and 6 in the input register. So we take the 6 from the 12, which means the answer which will come in the counter will have 6 decimal places, like that. So the division is done by multiple subtraction. You crank the handle backwards until the bell rings. The bell indicates there's been an underflow. Then you add that back in just to clear the underflow and shift the carriage across to the left one. So we'll turn the handle backwards and immediately the bell rings. So we add that one back in and shift the carriage across one. And then we do the same again. And we repeat the process. And each time the bell rings, we add one back in again and shift the carriage across one and carry on. And at this point, you can see that the output register is all zeros. That means it's worked out exactly. So our 2029 divided by 800 gives the answer 2.53625. There is another way to enter the number into the output register on this machine. You don't actually have to enter it from the input register because there are some little um, knurled wheels here. So I could have actually entered my 2029 just by using these knurled wheels. And that isn't the case on a lot of pinwheel calculators, but it is on this one. To demonstrate the back transfer mechanism, if I want to do 42 cubed, I'll put 42 into the input register and I'll multiply that by 42. So in the units column, it's one, two turns, shift the carriage across and then do four turns. So one, two, three, four, 
So now you've got 42 times 42, which is 1764. Then reset the carriage back to the start position. Pull the back transfer lever, which clears the input register and latches in place. Now when I clear the output register, it transfers that number to the input register. So now I can multiply that by 42, so again, two turns there, shift the carriage across in four turns. And so now 42 cubed, which is 74,088. And I can carry on this process if I want, so if I reset the carriage again, pull the back transfer lever and reset the carriage and that transfers that into the input register and I can multiply that by 42 so that's 1, 2, shift the carriage across 1, 2, 3, 4 and that figure there didn't quite set correctly but there we go 3,111,696 and I could carry on doing that until I filled up the output register and just looking at the side of the machine, if you inadvertently pull the back transfer lever instead of just the input register reset, it latches in position. But you can release that by pressing a little button down here, which flicks it back to its start position. Something we haven't looked at yet is the crank handle itself. To do a rotation of the crank handle, you have to pull it out, which releases a pin that goes into this receptacle here. That pin also operates a rod inside the machine, and when you pull the pin out, you can no longer adjust the input register until you've done your rotation and put the pin back in, and then you can adjust the numbers again. So now for something a little bit more complicated. If we want to work out the square root of 2, I'll move the carriage across the same as I would for division, and I'll put the 2 in the column 3 from the left hand end of the input register, because I now want to add that into the output register 5 times, so I'll do 5 turns of the handle, like that, and I'll clear the counter, so I'll move that button to the left and clear the counter, and I'll also clear the 2 out of the input register. And now I'll replace that 2 with a number 5. And what I'm going to do now is subtract that number 5 and then increment the column to the left of the number 5 by 1. And then I'll subtract again. The bell's rung, so I'll add that back in. I'll leave the 1 in place and I'll get rid of the 5 in that column and move the 5 to the next column to the right and I'll shift the carriage across to the left 1 and I'll do the same again. So I'll subtract 1, increment that by 1, subtract another, increment by 1, subtract again, increment by 1, subtract again, increment by 1, subtract again, the bell rings, so I add that one back in, I leave that lever in place, move, get rid of the 5 and move it to the next column to the right and shift the carriage across and do the same again. So subtract, move the lever to the left of the 5 by 1, subtract again, bell rings, so I add that one back in. Leave everything but the 5 in place, get rid of the 5 and move it a column to the right, shift the carriage across one and do the same again. So subtract by 1, increment that lever 1, again increment by 1, and again increment by 1, and again increment by 1, and again, and the bell rings so I add that one back in. Same thing, get rid of the 5, move it a column to the right and shift the carriage across one and repeat the procedure. So, increment by 1, increment by 1, bell rings, add that one back in. Get rid of the 5, move it a column to the right, shift the carriage across and same again. Increment by 1, bell rings, add that one back in. Get rid of the 5, move it a column to the right, shift the carriage across and repeat. Increment by 1, increment by 1, increment by 1, bell rings, add that one back in. Get rid of the 5, move it a column to the right, shift the carriage across one and do the same again. Increment by, whoops, by 1, increment by 1, increment by 1. Increment by 1, increment by 1, increment by 1, 
bell rings, add that one back in. So now, with a bit of luck, we should have the answer on the counter of 1.4142136, which should be an approximation of the square root of 2. We'll check that in a minute. There are other methods for doing square roots, but that's the only one I actually know, and it's plenty complicated enough for me. It doesn't work with all numbers, and I'm sure someone somewhere in the comments will tell me a better system, but that'll do for now. Anyway, we'll double check that figure, so if I reset everything, and we'll now uh, multiply 1.414.2136 by itself. So there'll be seven decimal places in the input register and seven in the counter. That means there'll be 14 decimal places in the output register. So I'll just enter the number into the input register. So we've got a six and a three and a one and a two and a four and a one and a another 4 and a 1, so 1.414.2136, OK, that's correct. So we'll now start multiplying that by itself. So we've got 6 turns, shift the carriage across, 3 turns, shift the carriage across, 1 turn, shift the carriage across, 2 turns, shift the carriage across, 4 turns, Shift the carriage across, one turn. Shift the carriage across, another four turns. And finally, shift the carriage across and do the last turn. So we've now multiplied 1.414.2136 by 1.414.2136, giving us the answer 2.000000 and then a few other random digits, but it is only an approximation of the square root of 2 after all, so that's not too bad. OK, I've removed the covers so we can have a look at the pinwheel itself. For each column of numbers there is a wheel with pins in it, hence the name. And if I move the lever for the input register, for each click one more pin is pushed out of the drum. So, or the wheel. So now I've got the first column set to 9, and as I rotate it, you'll see all of its 9 pins are sticking out, whereas the other wheels, they're all in, because they're all set at 0. And as the machine rotates, the sticking out pins act against the little spiky wheel here, which in turn turns the output register, the corresponding amount of clicks. The carry function is dealt with by a movable plate just down here and a pin that can be deflected here. So if I rotate the machine to the point it's about to carry, so the number wheel is now just about to get up to 9, so as it clicks over to 10 you'll see this movable plate move in towards the pinwheel, like that. And that movable plate, as the uh, pin goes past it, the pin will be deflected to the left and it will interact with this star wheel here which will turn the next digit on by one. So as I rotate, you'll see the next digits rotating and you can see the pin that's been deflected and it will now move back to its rest position. And as I carry on rotating, the plate that did the deflecting will be pushed back to its home position ready for the process to start again. I think this video has gone on plenty long enough. If you've enjoyed watching, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.